13 points. 13 points. 10 point decrease in points per game from the regular season to the playoffs for this year's MVP, Joel Embiid, the only MVP in the history of the NBA to never appear in a conference finals and he has had chances. He has had the teams, the facilities to get his team there as the number one guy. And I have generally been a Joel Embiid apologist, so to speak. I'm very aware of the lack of playoff success. I'm very aware of the reputation that he has built for himself in the biggest games that he plays. And on a given night in the NBA regular season, he is as dominant of a player as there is in the NBA. And that's not something that we just saw last year. There's a reason that he finishes runner up twice in a row prior to winning the MVP this season. Now, a lot of people are gonna call this MVP fake. They're gonna say, this man is a fraud. We see the way he plays when it really matters. And while Joel Embiid's true value as a basketball player may be misrepresented by his finishes the last three years in MVP voting, the truth is that in the regular season, he is as valuable as a basketball player as there is. And how he plays in the playoffs, it doesn't have any bearing on his MVP candidacy year in, year out. This is just the facts. Maybe at a certain point, we stop giving him the benefit of the doubt or the voters do come the end of the season when all the voting occurs and this guy that has never done anything in the playoffs is dominating the league once again and he has put himself in a position to win an MVP award. But that's not what this video is about. Because to be honest, when we're talking about superstars in the NBA, when we're talking about who is really the best players in the league, I'm not looking at MVP awards. That's not the determining factor. How many people were really calling Nikola Jokic the best player in the NBA the last few years despite him running away with MVPs? A lot of people are arguing he should have won it this year. Down the stretch of the season, whether he was conceding it or whether he was just mailing it in, just kind of slowing down, preparing for the playoffs, not trying to go as hard while Embiid was out there, most nights, trying to win the award, putting up these monster performances, we were still all saying Giannis is the best player in the league. And to bring up Giannis, it is a very interesting point because he goes out sad this year. It isn't the first time that the Bucks and Giannis have had an unprecedented, disappointing exit from the NBA playoffs. But that being said, he's stamped just because he's won a championship. He has earned a reputation of being a superstar, being as good as anybody in the NBA, despite how this season ended. It's not like he got worse. He came back, played through an injury, just like Joel Embiid. Not the same injury, maybe it doesn't affect him in the same way. But the point is that a lot of guys are playing with injuries at this point. And Embiid, regardless of how documented his injuries have been around this time of the year, it happens every year. It's like clockwork. Philadelphia 76ers, they fold. They unravel, they self-destruct with Joel Embiid at the helm, and he is always dealing with something. In this case, it's the LCL, an injury he supposedly wasn't supposed to be playing with. We see this happen a lot. I think the reporting is a very interesting factor because a lot of guys are injured and are limited in a much greater way than the media is allowed to tell us. Like, maybe you have to just watch a player to figure out that he's really not right. He's really not his best self. I don't know if y'all saw that picture of Jimmy. You saw what his ankle looked like. For anybody who was thinking, wait, Jimmy doesn't look the same as he looked in that first series. No, he didn't. Well, they were throwing two, three bodies at him every time the Knicks were in that series, but that ankle still looks like a golf ball. We didn't really get to see it that much, but this was after the series. Clearly, he wasn't looking quite the same as he looked in that Bucks series. But let's get back to Joel, because 13 points. He had some big games in this series, but this Sixers team, major underdogs. Regardless of having Joel Embiid, a lot of people would have argued the best player in the series, officially the MVP of the league, but it's the Sixers against the Celtics. We just know how this goes. And honestly, getting to a game seven, they made it closer than I thought that they would, especially considering Joel didn't even play the first game and he comes back and he's probably rushing back from injury. He's probably not his best self. Again, tale as old as time, but we don't have the evidence. This is the main point in the video. The main reason you can say this guy is not a superstar, because for me, I know we love to throw that word around, that is the big buzzword, how we are evaluating players, how we are anointing them in the NBA. I always said Tatum isn't a superstar. You might think I look stupid now. He had his best game of his career in game seven. Absolute masterclass. I can't take anything away from it. It was beautiful. That being said, he's going up against single coverage Tobias Harris every time. He's not doing that same thing against the Heat. You can't hunt Bam Adebayo the way that you hunted Joel Embiid. And here's another reason that we have to take points off from Embiid, not just scoring 13 points. 
but they were cooking your ass, trying to get you switched onto the perimeter, and you couldn't stop guys once. You were baby food. And this is what really lost you guys the game in the end, a lack of adjustment. Surprise, surprise, Doc Rivers can't counter Jason Tatum. He can't throw another body. The game just got too sped up. They weren't trying to call timeouts, trying to figure this shit out. They were saying, you know what? He's just going to miss eventually. Tatum, he, he can't be hot forever. He can't just hit every shot. Just play our game. But they were compromised. Embiid, Harden, it was Clamp City. And on the other side of the ball, pretty hopeless for Joel Embiid trying to guard Jason Tatum on those switches. Let's get back to that superstar conversation because Joel Embiid has never been to the conference finals. He has never had a playoff run. I mean, we anoint him because of his regular season achievements and the sheer dominance that he has displayed over the last several seasons, year in, year out. When he is on the court, he is devastating top three player in the regular season, but things change drastically when we get to this time of the year, and this is where you make your name as a superstar. How can we put him ahead of a Jimmy Butler? After last night, how can we put him ahead of Jason Tatum? He has never had a game like Jason Tatum had, even the quarter Jason Tatum had, after an abomination of a first three quarters in game six in Philly. Has Joel Embiid ever had a fourth quarter like that in a second round playoff game? Listen, I know about the injury thing. Guys have had big performances on injuries. Some guys, surely they don't react the same way. I mean, if we got to see this guy healthy once in the playoffs, he really wasn't dealing with anything. Are we sure? that he could go out and dominate and be his self in the regular season, we have never seen that. You gotta expect for a player to be a superstar that they will at least have games, career nights, statement, defining performances in playoff games, in big games against great competition, regardless of if they're dealing with something. They will show that they are that guy in some capacity. And it feels like with Joel Embiid, when the pressure is at its greatest, he is not responsive. He is not rising to the occasion. He is doing the opposite of that. There is certainly fraudulence to be observed. I've been waiting for him to really have that series, but it's just not happened yet. I still have belief that he's going to reach that point, but he's, he's just got a ways to go. And it's a bad look to be complaining about your teammates, to be throwing guys under the bus. This is not the first time he's done this either. It feels like accountability is not an easy thing for Joel Embiid to really accept. At some point, you gotta look in the mirror and you gotta realize that there's more growth to be done. You're gonna be the best player on a championship team, a conference finals team at that. You gotta be better. You are the one with the most pressure, not James Harden, regardless of how bad James Harden plays in this game. And before I get to James Harden, listen, he has the blame as well to an extent, Doc Rivers. First of all, this is not going to work. You have a trio of guys with playoff failure reputation. The Celtics are an established, deep playoff team every single year. They are the deepest team in basketball. They have a better team chemistry. They have a greater identity that wins basketball games when it matters. Philadelphia, the story is the same every single year. It's a good team but it's just not the best. And it will not rise to the occasion when it needs to. But James Harden, I would just say, this is a guy that is past his prime and he was never the guy to deliver the goods in the playoffs, even when he's a number one guy. And he had some absolutely monster games in this series, some of his best playoff games of his career. But in the biggest games, you can't rely on him to deliver. Just like you can't rely on Joel Embiid, this is what separates superstars from star players. As crazy as it might sound, because we have seen this man all year, 33 points per game, it's nothing to sneeze at at all. Even in today's NBA, where scoring is as inflated as it's been, this is the most dominant player this season. If you combine both ends of the floor, I mean, you see what he can do on the defensive side of the basketball as a rim protector. This team needs a new coach. He is not the only one at fall here, but we can't ignore the track record. We do not have the playoff run that establishes a guy as a superstar. And this is when it counts, so that's my take. Let me know what you guys think. A lot of fingers being pointed right now for Philadelphia. And that's going to do it. Peace.